Okay, hi there guys. Um, today I'm just going to be presenting to you um, an update of my pedal board and specifically the switching unit that I'm using, um, the amazing One Control Crocodile Tail Loop, which is this big um, black switching unit at the bottom of my board. A lot of updates have happened on my board recently because I've um, bought and been sent for demo some new pedals that have just totally blown my mind, um, specifically the Empress stuff and the Timeline and um, the Wampler gear. So, um, basically what I'm going to do is talk you through this one control unit, um, the Crocodile Tail Loop, show you what it does and why I'm using it and why it's so useful and why you guys might want to use it. Um, so basically it's a 10 loop switching system with MIDI functionality um, and dedicated tuner out with a really high quality buffer for um, providing a great input signal for all of your true bypass pedals. Because I have, I think it's 14 true bypass pedals here, including the tuner, which is fairly insane. So essentially what it does is it allows you to plug up to 10 loops or individual signal chains into one unit and then store up to 70 presets or combinations of those loops um, in seven banks with uh, 10 presets in each. Sorry, 10 banks, I should say, with seven presets in each. So let me just go through like the, the, uh, the layout of the unit. So along the bottom, we've got these um, silver, um, uh, basically, uh, foot switches. And they're basically seven different um, presets. We can, you might be able to see, hopefully, if the camera's picked it up, PGM1 on the right, PGM2, then PGM3, uh, all the way through to seven. And basically, when I select these using my rather lovely sock, okay, it changes which pedals are in the signal chain and which ones are out of the signal chain. So, uh, signal one, uh, sorry, program one has got, um, what have we got there? We've got the uh, Empress compressor, the Empress Power EQ, we've got the volume pedal in loop number seven, and then we've got the timeline and the blue sky, so delay and reverb. So we've got this kind of a, this kind of a sound. <laughs> And by the way, for the purpose of this demo, I'm using my um, Sir Classic, so we've got all single core stuff going on here. Okay, so as I switch, let's say I switch to program number six there, basically now we've got uh, loops one, two, three, uh, loop seven and loop 10 active, and that would be the compressor, the EQ, the Paisley, which is in loop three at the moment on its own, and the volume pedal and the timeline. <laughs> Okay, so it's a really, really great way of being able to switch between lots of different pedals without having to tap dance. And not only that, but because of the quality of the components inside, it's got really, really fantastic um, signal path. The, the chain that you get is really, really quiet, maintains your tone. And the huge benefit of a unit like this is if you had all 14 of these pedals hooked up in a chain, a series chain, where your signal was running through them, even though they're true bypass, you are absolutely going to lose some tone, specifically sort of top end tone, um, the, the sort of higher end frequencies, which is not going to happen with a unit like this, because at the moment I've got 14 pedals on the board and I'm only running through, what am I running through? Five of them, five of them at the moment. Um, so I'm basically cutting out a huge amount of wires that would otherwise um, degrade my tone, basically. Um, so yeah, really, really useful. So the other features of this unit, I'll show you how to edit and stuff on it in a minute because it's really simple. But the other features that we've got, um, essentially the, uh, the really cool feature with a unit like this is the MIDI functionality. And that, what that allows me to do is my timeline, my Strymon timeline, which is the big grey pedal up in the top left corner, is a very complicated um, delay unit. And if you want to be able to switch patches on that, because that stores up to 200 patches of its own, you have to hit, you, normally what you'd have to do is hit a foot switch on the one control and then go up to the timeline and change the patch afterwards. But what the one control OC10 will do, or crocodile tail loop, is send a MIDI signal to the timeline and it will tell it to change the patch. So if you keep your eye on the timeline now, on the top left of the timeline, the LED screen, you'll see a preset called melt away. If I now switch to program number, let's go to program number four. Uh, excuse me if I knock the camera. So it's changed the actual patch to bit clock, okay? If I go to number seven, 
there we go, panned eighths. So it's switching the timeline whenever I press my new patch on the one control, which is insanely useful. Um, you need a MIDI capable pedal to do this, but there's quite a lot of those on the market, especially in the delay field. The F Empress Phaser, for instance, is also, um, you can also make that MIDI, uh, have, have MIDI functionality, which is really, really useful. So I'm using it for the timeline. So, I mean, that's, that's really great. It will also accept MIDI um, in, so you could use another MIDI floor unit to control the OC10, which would be great if you've got like a, a Roland or a Boss, uh, sorry, a Behringer floor controller, you can, you can have that out the front of the stage and control the unit that way. Um, okay, so you can also um, hook up one or two, sorry, two or three of these units. The, uh, there's an Ethernet cable on the back, which will allow you to um, slave two or, you know, however many units you want together and run up to, you know, you could have 20 or 30 loops running if you've got an insane pedal board. I think this is fairly insane to start with, but if you've got a really crazy pedal board, you know, that you could do that. So let me show you how easy it is to edit with this thing as well. Um, so you really get an idea of the uh, easy functionality and user friendliness, you know, nature of this unit. The only thing I will say is if you're gonna get something like this, make sure you've got loads of patch cables because you're gonna need a ton in order to get all of this stuff to work. But basically um, within a preset, let me go back to preset number one. The red LEDs, which are located just here, on the units. Um, basically, each one of those controls a loop, and if I just tell you really quickly what I've got in each of my loops. In loop number one, I've got the uh, Empress compressor. Loop number two is the uh, Empress Power EQ. Loop number three is the Ecstasy and Paisley together, because I like to stack those. Um, in fact, I'm gonna switch the Ecstasy on now so I can you can really hear some of the presets I've got. Um, loop number four is my Wampler Pinnacle Deluxe. Loop number five is the, oh, loop number five is saved actually for the Texas Flood and my Redemptionist pedal because I haven't got patch cables to hook those up so I need to get those patch, um, patched in. Uh, loop number six is the, um, oh, I'm lying slightly, loop, loop number five, sorry, is the phaser, the Empress phaser. Um, loop number six is the Providence Chorus. Uh, loop number seven is my volume pedal. Loop number eight is the one that's saved for the Texas Flood and the Redemptionist. And loop number nine is the Strymon Blue Sky. Loop number 10 is the Timeline. So in patch number one, which I selected, I've got loop number one, which is the Empress Compressor. I've got loop number two, which is the Para EQ. I've got the volume pedal in loop number seven on, and then I've got the Blue Sky and the Timeline. You can tell that because those LEDs are lit. If, for instance, in patch number one, I wanted my Ecstasy and Paisley drive, it's as simple as this. I find loop number three and press it. Okay, you can hear a little bit of buzz there because I've got them stacked together. And now I have this. <laughs> Really, really, really cool. So you don't even need to save that. It's automatically saved with those loops on. If I switch to preset number two and go back again, that LED number three for loop number three is still on. Let's switch it back off again. Okay, so that's, it's incredibly easy to store presets. If I go to number two, you'll notice that loop number nine, uh, sorry, number 10, the timeline switch is off, okay? and it's sending um, MIDI signals to the timeline as well, so the patch changes. So now I've just got reverb as opposed to the timeline as well. Okay, really, 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 really cool. So that's the editing, which is incredibly easy. Within the unit, you've got a couple of bank up and down buttons as well. So I'm in bank number one at the moment. If I go up to bank number two, I've got more presets in here. Okay, this is my uh, Pinnacle Deluxe, the first Pinnacle Deluxe preset I have on the board. <laughs> So the reason I did quite a bit of playing there is you can hear it's not 
affecting the tone going through this unit at all. I've, I've got pristine tone. You can hear the top end there is coming through really nicely. Um, let me just switch back down to bank number one so we don't get the noise from the pedals. Okay, so I can store up to 70 presets in, uh, as I was mentioning before, seven, uh, 10 banks of seven patches, and it's completely silent switching. There's no pops or clicks at all, unless the pedals themselves make a pop or a click. We've got a dedicated tuner function. If I hit this button up here, we go into tuner mode. It's completely muted. Um, you can hear that I'm playing guitar, but you're not hearing anything at all. Um, I've got my tuner hooked up slightly differently, so I'm not using it that, uh, in that way, but you can do that if you want. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that's all the controls on the unit. Um, if I um, hit this button and hold it down, we go into a dedicated, what they call direct mode. So each of the um, foot switches now becomes uh, dedicated to a particular loop. So I've got my uh, pinnacle in loop number four and the Strymon uh, timeline in loop number 10. If I want to switch those on, I hit number four. Sorry if I knocked the camera there. And then I hit number 10 and those two are on. <laughs> If instead of the, uh, the pinnacle, I want the um, other Wampler pedals on, I hit number three instead. Again, apologies for knocking the camera. So that's a great way of having direct access to your loops if you want to work in that way and build sounds um, separately. Um, so yeah, really, really useful. Let me go back to preset mode or program mode. And it's as simple as that, basically. So yeah, phenomenal unit. It's got multiple ins and outs. Um, you could run this into a couple of different amps if you wanted a stereo setup. Um, really, really flexible. The other thing I would say, made like a tank. It's made of what looks like brushed aluminium, or I'm not sure about that, but it's a beautiful finish. Very, very um, slick to look at. And the, uh, the brushed finish on the handle here this section is absolutely beautiful, really, really, really well made. And the foot switches are very positive and they don't make click noises. They're, they're just a, a push switch as opposed to a click switch, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, extremely flexible unit and very, very well made. Um, what I'm going to do now just to finish is go through a few of the patches, do a little bit of playing so you can hear what's going on. And this is a state of flux at the moment. This is not like a set scenario, but it just gives you an idea of what I've got going on at the moment. Um, so yeah. Patch number one is basically my clean tone with a bit of uh, a tape delay on there. Okay, patch number two is the same thing, but with just the reverb. Okay, number three, essentially a clean tone with the EQ taken out, so you're hearing the Pearl Direct. Patch number four, this is basically um, like a, a, this brings the Providence chorus in, so we've got a Leslie kind of effect. So on and so forth. Um, number five. Okay, we've got this, a very, sort of a long slap back delay. Okay, number six is my first overdrive sound. This is the Paisley and the Ecstasy stacked. I love this sound. <laughs>
number seven is my um, the phaser. I've got this in kind of like a, a reggae-ish kind of auto wah. Okay, on to bank number two. I'm not going to go through all 70, don't worry. Okay, now I've got um, this kind of an ambient. So on and so forth. Uh, next one. This is uh, the first of the pinnacle sounds. <laughs> Amazing pedal. Um, number three, this is really cool. This is uh, like a uh, Michael Landau style swelling sound. Okay, and then uh, like a, a square wave kind of. Uh, like repetitive delay. You can hear the trails there as well, that's kind of cool. So the obligatory reverse delay. Okay, um, if I just go really quickly, bank number three, for instance, I'll make this probably the last one. Um, you've got the standard kind of... Okay, so... All of those sounds coming from this group of pedals, but with the flexibility and the ease of use of being able to just hit one foot switch to change all of that, um, that configuration, if you like, for each of the pedals. So there we have it, the One Control Crocodile Tail Loop, or the OC10, amazing unit, absolutely brilliant. Go and check them out. I've put the link to the One Control website underneath the video. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a Japanese site. So if you're not Japanese, you can translate it into whatever language you are you know, most comfortable with. But if you go on Facebook, um, you can find their Facebook page and that's all in English and you can converse with them via messages or posts on their page. They're incredibly helpful guys, really, really, really knowledgeable and really, really helpful. So uh, if you're interested in one of these units, either this one or one of the smaller ones, which are just superb, you know, really, really space saving if you don't need this many loops, go and check them out and I will see you next time. Cheers.